the overarching philosophy behind this segment <clears throat> is basically the world is way smaller than it used to be. Uh, communication on the planet is ex exponentially dynamic. And whether we want to change the world that we're working in or just work in it, I think it's important, we think it's important to just know the context in which we're working. You know, so, so many of our best people have, with, with what would I say, very successive and subjective backgrounds, find themselves handicapped by those backgrounds when they go to other countries and make assumptions they don't realize they're making. And I think that, that a, a great key for alleviating that problem is just familiarity with the culture in these countries. So there's some scary topics up here. <laughs> We're not going to discuss those today. But stuff goes on all over the world that uh, can at, at any moment, especially these days, become an issue that your company can be embroiled in before you even see it coming. You know, a, a, all it takes is a couple of tweets and, and boom, you've got a movement. So these are things I think we need to be prepared for. So this is where we began. I think when we talk about, uh, this is a great recent example of corporate political social activism is Disney, Marvel, that says George, but what I meant to say was North Carolina, um, taking their business out of North Carolina because of their recent actions uh, denying rights to LGBT people. All, these, all of these companies have plenty of LGBT people working for them. And it's a, I think it's, as Steve said, it's very unique for one of our companies to be boycotting clients versus clients boycotting us. And this is, no matter how apolitical we want to be, we are, by the simple fact of working all over the world, geopolitical actors. So that's the point. So our, our conversation today, really very simple, digital immediacy, eye communications, uh, the cultural evolution around the world uh, in the areas of animal rights, women's rights. Oh, you know, I don't have to read it to you. So here we are. <laughs> so our very first speaker, who has been, with, uh, been a member of TEA since the very beginning, has uh, worked through several of the, worked through and tossed aside several companies, and is now the chief creative officer of SeaWorld. You all know him, so I'd like to introduce Anthony Esparza. Well, good afternoon, everyone. You know, before we get started, I just thought it might be good to just to level set a little bit and just show you a quick video, and then we'll just dive right in. So, you know, when I was asked to uh, join this discussion, 
I thought it might be appropriate actually at the very beginning to say that really we should rename this from the elephant in the room to the whale in the room. <laughs> and uh, you know, I want to just tell you right off the bat that I'm here to be able to address a new SeaWorld and a company that is going in a new direction and is wanting to get your help and support and partner with many of you in the new vision and the new brand that we have coming up. Uh, some of you are very familiar with us, but some are not. But I thought it might be useful to just sort of tell you how the day will go here real quick. I'll just give you a quick rundown of our company, a uh, little bit about our brand and the idea of protecting animals and wild wonders, our next moves, kind of let you know where we're headed, and uh, definitely leave some time at the end for questions, because I think that's probably the most useful part of this discussion today is to allow you to ask directly about some of the things that's going on within our company. So let's just dive right in. Uh, we've been around for a little while. Uh, a lot of you may not know SeaWorld is made up of many theme parks, three of which are SeaWorlds. Uh, it's evolved over, over 50 years and the culture has evolved over 50 years and it has definitely changed along many, way, along many of these paths. Uh, chapters have, have flipped many pages to become what we are today. You know, we, uh, we have four of the top 20 theme parks, many, many animals, 800 species. And I'm not sure how many parks you've visited of ours, but we have the Bush Gardens parks as well as the SeaWorld parks, many aquaticas um, and very notable parks as well. You know, what's at the heart of a lot of our brand is animals. You know, it's obvious, right? But inside that is not really a company that wants to show you animals, but wants to have you reflect on animals and their situation in our world. Uh, and we know that people love animals. You know, most of you here have pets in your own home. And uh, it's just symbolic of the kinds of things that we think about the power of what these other what these other organisms are about. Um, what's interesting is how do you do, how do you go about telling the animal story? Uh, we need to listen to our guests. We listen to the moms. We listen to the millennials a lot lately um, because this is where the world is changing. Uh, and these are just a couple of quick slides that just reflect reams of information that we've been looking at over the last couple of months. Um, there's a new SeaWorld. I've been with the company about five and a half months now. Uh, prior to my arrival, we have a new CEO, Joel Manby. Uh, we have a new CFO. We have a new COO and lots of other Cs. And um, the, the, the reason I say that is there's a, a new management at the top of the company looking at things a little bit differently, yet trying to preserve the power and the foundation that brought SeaWorld to where we are today. And we think we have the ability to do some really great things. The new SeaWorld wants to be the protectors of animals and the wild wonders of our world, okay? It is not a place that is a zoo. It is not a place filled with roller coasters. It's a place that has a mission behind the entertainment. The entertainment is a way to deliver the message and the message wants to begin to reflect on something that we've been doing for many years that we're gonna be doing more of, which is rescue. We, like I said, we're not a zoo per se, but we need animals to be able to connect with you emotionally and to ultimately allow us now today to pivot to some of the things that we're strong about. We, we are known for being the place people call when an animal's in trouble. We recognize that the animals that we really rescue in the world is a very minute, small number. But what the, the reason we do it is because of the modeling that it creates for kids and families and others to show how a company can be a business but have a purpose. And that's the big takeaway here. It's not to say we want to rescue and continue to try to rescue as many animals as we can. We're doing it so that people can understand that you can have a purpose in your life and your business and, and anything that you're doing. 
to help magnify this, we are going to be very open. Uh, we continue to be open, not only with the way we develop things, we want to be open working with the TEA and the people that we work with, but with partners in science, partners in the community, and even individuals that will help celebrate. Um, and then our, our DNA is to create experiences that matter. And it kind of sounds a little funny, but what it really means is there's a purpose to the experience. And it's not entertainment that matters, but we're putting this extra sort of load on our backpack to say whenever we're doing something, there has to be a message that helps project a person, a family, a business towards this goal of protecting animals and the wild wonders of our world. So we're gonna to endeavor to do that. So experiences matter, what does that mean? It's a little bit of this. A true moment of inspiration never keeps to itself. It defies boundaries and makes its own reality. From moments curious and filled with wonder to a place of pure imagination and possibilities unimaginable. It's the call to explore with an instance of connection that keeps on connecting in ways only a child can understand. Sometimes it's a small discovery that becomes a seed for the future or an epic encounter here telling of the wild places out there. For SeaWorld, the evidence is in experiences that matter. With every impression and at every intersection of fun and meaningful, it's exploration answered with inspiration, discovery rewarded with tales to tell, and curiosity met with wonder that what we see in nature reveals the nature we see in ourselves. So welcome to the explorers, the believers, the searchers, the champions of the wild. A new frontier calls, and these moments are your moments. To protect, to preserve, to celebrate, and take on one action at a time for lasting good. Because SeaWorld knows that what touches the heart can touch everyone. It's proof that one moment of inspiration can change our world. It's kind of the key statement. You know, one moment of inspiration can change the world. So you could just say our new company is trying to create inspiration moments because that's what we can bring to the world. We have 20,000 employees that we are now pivoting towards this brand and this message. Uh, that's a lot of people when you get them aligned. And we have 20 million guests that we can dive deeply with when they come and visit the parks that between the two, we think we can begin to start making these differences to, to help the animals and the wild wonders. And by the way, we say wild wonders versus wild habitats or wild places because it's intentionally a little bit broad. We want to have some flexibility to interpret what that is. And the way we interpret is to get people to do three different things. First, we're going to help you explore. The whole mission of exploring, whether it's through our attractions, through our online, through the television shows, is if we can get you in your busy world, you know, we, we like to believe everybody's paying attention to everything that we do. But if we can get you to the park to be in exploration mode just for a second and point you towards some information about an animal or a place where you just go, huh, done. That's the mission of Explore, just to go, huh, I, I didn't know that. I, I get, got a little more information and now you've got me. Then we go to the phase two to help inspire you. And again, through attractions, through our entertainment, through the different programs that we have, through encounters with animals, live or digital, okay? 
we want to now take you to the next level where we can load you up with a little bit more information and assume you're an active participant in your life. We are assuming our guests are active learners, are active thinkers, and are not passive. And we're going to treat you that way in all of the ways that we do the different products that we offer. Then lastly, to, to me, this is what we can own. Okay, If you were to say, generally speaking, a lot of the animal displays and a lot of the different works that are going on by very great, credible, good organizations take you to step one and two, we're all about this step number three. And that's why you saw me talk about rescue as a model, but the mission is to talk to a child you know, the very first time about exploring the ocean and that it's normal to take action. It's normal for a family to get together and go do some activity. It's normal for a company to have a purpose. It's normal to do this extra thing because we have to and we want to do that. So taking action is a big part of our world and you can just sort of model like this. If Disney is too magic, we're too the taking action in experiences that matter piece, okay? Distinct guest experiences, fun and meaningful. So this is, this, is, this is all part of a set of brand tools that we're talking to our employees about that I'm sharing with you. So we are fun. It says entertainment in our, in our, in our name. We use this term around the company where theme park rules apply. We can't get too serious because people are coming here for an escape, people are coming here to, to have fun, and if we do that, you're gonna have something fun happen to you, but you're gonna get that purpose with you. You're going to have family time that is exciting and thrilling, and you're gonna have potentially that camp or that school experience or even a one-on-one -on -one family experience that is meaningful. That's our combo. We talk about language that very specifically tries to touch your heart. That's something that we've learned many times. A lot of you know that as storytelling. But specifically, we, we think about how to do this in a non-scientific way, necessarily, in a non-conservation worded kind of way, so that we're taking you on a journey from A to B so that you can learn these things and that you can understand them. We're going to begin to turn our parks inside out. That was one of the problems we've had. People thought we were just making animals do tricks, that we were not feeding them until they did the show the right way, when in reality, a ton of work was going on behind the scenes with great zoological teams of people rescuing, doing research, and we're gonna show that so that people can also not only understand it, but kids could be inspired to become that, to want to do those things. Uh, we share that through shows like Sea Rescue on Saturday morning, as well as our show Wildlife Docs, both of which got nominated for Emmys last week, and we're proud of that, because it's the beginning of just getting it out in a different kind of way. The attractions that we create are still, like I said, going to be fun and meaningful, but they can have that, that position that rings true to these messages of rescue, these messages of going on expeditions and journeys, and still be a cool roller coaster, or still learn about a particular animal. So I'll show you these images as a, as a counter to the animal experiences that we have to show you that we look at it both ways. It's not just animals in the traditional sense. So, you know, as we move forward, we have a lot of different things we need to do. We're launching our new brand as Champions of the Wild. For you specifically, to help us, we are launching into a program to develop resorts so that we can go even deeper with the experiences that people have at our properties. And we're actively doing that. We've started a new group to begin that work. Uh, we're looking at new parks, and I wouldn't say they're necessarily SeaWorld as you know them. It's next generation, 21st century kind of twist and turns to what that could be. And then, of course, new attractions with this fun and meaningful purpose. So with that, I think I'll sort of pause here 
get to the good part. So we can talk a little bit. I don't have any slides beyond this point. It's really a chance for you to talk about anything. Okay. So, so Anthony, the first question, just to close this part of the conversation, which we talked about before, is would you be willing to share what you can share about enlightenment gained from the Blackfish, yeah. Shamu, like what, what, what was learned through that that I think resulted in this? Well, I think, you know, I, I wasn't here through the whole saga, okay, but when it began, the enlightenment was when Blackfish came out, I think the company felt like they took a hit, but it's going to go away. And they took another hit as it played again on CNN and again and again and again. And at some point, magically, it took on a life of its own and became a forest fire. And the company started to react too late to tell its story. And so, and I'm not even saying that even had they reacted early, that it wouldn't have still gone in the direction it did. But there was a lot of misinformation stuck in with the, you know, the, the debate. Okay, and that was what was unfortunate, and that's where the brand took a big hit. And it got to the point where America got involved, the world got involved, and it was so interesting to see the communications behind the scenes and before the scenes. And you know, it got to the point in the place where we felt as a company that we needed to not only listen to the activists to a certain level, right? But it was affecting our guests and their opinions, particularly those millennials, right? The world had changed. And in our opinion, there wasn't anywhere to go back to. The, the, the idea of animals, killer whales specifically, being in theatrical shows was not the right thing for us to do as a company. And it killed us to talk about it, to think about it. And I think there was a little bit of a denial period for a moment in time, but it led to some good conversation, which then led to some action. And it led to really identifying seven different groups of people that we had to begin to think about, like our guests, our investors, our internal zoo team, our, you know, all the different people that were part of the conversation. And we began doing the homework to say, well, what if, we decided to do this? What if we didn't do this on each one of those? And it was a very grueling, hard thing to do. But in the end, all the, the bright minds got together to decide that, you know what, there's a different kind of a future out there. It may not be with Shamu, and it may not be with the killer whale, and it may not be that thing that everybody thinks of our main parks of SeaWorld without killer whales. And uh, we're you know, like it or not, it's kind of like, you know, Columbus heading to the New World and cutting the anchor and not being able to go back. So that's what happened two weeks ago. We, we have confidence now that we believe, and we've done work. I can't share it all with you, but we've done work to start spelling out a new future for the company and all the cool things that can happen. And I think that's the, the, the cool, interesting thing that all of you are going to need to help us with to keep us healthy. Because to execute those attractions and those, those media projects and digital ideas and all the different things that go on there to do it well. Because frankly, I think you need us to be healthy. I think we represent the tip of a spear on a big conversation regarding animals. And if we can do it right eventually, the industry will grow and be strong. And so, hate to be the ones that have taken the hit, but... I think uh, in the end, it's it, it was time. Yeah. Questions, questions, questions. Back there, oh, sir. Um, what role do you see the TEA having as taking a responsible role in helping guide these these challenges? I mean, that's a beautiful story about that transition and transformation. And, and you say you look towards the TEA. How does the TEA take responsibility to help the industry move forward? Well, part, part of our strategy is it, my job. I need to build a creative heartbeat within this company. And we're, we've begun to do that. We want to be creatively driven. And within that set of words, 
is the concept of we have a, we're calling it bright minds. We're trying to interconnect the smart people that we don't even know we have within our own company and get the conversation going in a better way. We also need other bright minds to help us from the outside, and we're calling those supercharged advisors. So many of you may be tapped to be part of our conversation, to be our advisor, to give us, to make sure we're getting outside perspectives and we're getting good feedback from whatever corner you may represent. And then lastly, brave partners. And we put the word brave in front of those partners because it's not just the typical sponsorship by an applesauce company kind of partner I'm talking about. Okay, I'm talking about companies who want to have a purpose and who are willing to get into it and to take the, the extra dimension and the extra load of not just, say, having a partnership deal with you know, sponsorship money, just going back and forth, but to go towards the purpose of helping animals in the wild wonders of our world and all the different unique things that we're going to have to do. So if we do those things, I think we start off on a good foundation. Let's just put it that way. Another question? That's where you fit in. Any more questions? Back there? What you described just now, in a lot of ways, sounded like um, a for profit company taking on a non profit, traditionally non profit mission. Yeah. So I'm wondering how will you address sort of pleasing the shareholders and the investors without alienating, alienating the guests? Well, you know, the, the investors are a big part of our world, right? You know, we, we are a publicly held company, and so we had a lot of discussions with our, our lead um, owners about this. Obviously, it wasn't something we could just spring on everybody. Um, it's interesting, you know, I think what we're saying is you can still make money and be okay. It, you don't have to be one or the other. Just as you are as people in your own world, you go to work, yet many of you have a purpose in your life in one dimension or another too, some more than others. And I think what we're doing is we're saying we're stepping up for that part more. So we're not going to be walking away from normal business decisions. In fact, you know, we had previously announced a $300 million Blue World project where we were going to be making bigger killer whale pools and doing all those things. Interestingly enough, it got interpreted that by making those pools bigger and trying to make the environment better, it was positioned as that so that you could put more whales in them. That, that was a little sidebar, but the point is that money now does not need to be spent that way. And we have it now to deploy to seed the, the mission, you know. I think people, particularly if you look at the research around the way millennials think, our, our next generation of leaders, they gravitate to companies that have that extra dimension to them. And that's why you see a lot of this going on. And I think they also can see through when it's just done for business purpose versus action and that's why you see the action piece in here we have to show it beyond words we have to we have to move so one more question anybody over on this side Mr. Chance. right there we have a mic. Um, just to prove your point um, I would like to say I'm one of those Millennials that gravitate towards companies uh, with a purpose um, definitely not alone in saying that you know um, this generation is really interested in sustainability and where things come from and transparency especially so yeah I really congratulate you offer your efforts thank you so before we close I just want to offer one last thing to the group based on something that uh, Anthony said is this thing that happened at SeaWorld is not an anomaly this is coming the world is evolving. It's no surprise to any of us. But in very real terms, I just want to articulate that, you know, zoos are next. And we have an opportunity as leaders to see this coming and figure out how we're going to handle it and what we're going to do. Because I believe that in a matter of within the decade, at least, any mammal bigger than a meerkat is going to have a movement behind it to get it back to its native habitat. Unless you have 27 square miles for each lion, it's going to be a problem. So I'm just saying that this is just the first. As the world evolves and people are aware, back to digital communication. You know, there are pictures of unhappy seals or unhappy lions or hippos. 
it's going to become an issue. So I just waved the flag that we have an opportunity to look at how to address it, how to offer alternative experiences that take people into the world of the animals that we can't maybe keep with us. Anyway, I'm just saying we should probably think about that. So, Anthony, thank you very much. Thank you.